Welcome. In front of me is a Sony Xperia 10 Mark 7, and today I will show you how you can go through the setup process of your device. So, when you boot it up for the very first time, you should be presented with the same screen that you can see on my end. And in here, you want to select your desired language. As you can see, we have a plethora of languages to choose from. Next, we're going to just click on Get Started once you have selected your language. And we have some important information. I am aware of the important information. Warranty, safety, etc. Now, that is the most kind of bullshit kind of uh, legal document that I've ever seen. So you don't really know what you're agreeing to and the way it's worded, it makes it look like it's not very important. Great job, Sony. You can always be, I can always rely on you to try to F over other people. So let's see, important information. Oh, wow, would you look at that? We have um, other things like warranty periods, about warranty, country region specific terms of warranty, guidelines for safety and uh, efficient use, um, some SAR value for UK and EU statements, export regulations, trademarks, and anyway, um, I just click on done, whatever. Now moving on, we have set up using another device. So if you, ha if you have a second phone, you will probably see a pop-up on it. So I'm going to just bring mine up. Just go back. Can I go back? No, I can't. Okay. So never mind. I won't be showing it because uh, this piece of shit can't go back. Great setup. Um, so normally you get a pop-up, but I did close it by mistake when I was just closing my messaging up. Uh, and once you close it, it doesn't show up again. And on this fantastic thing, you can't go back. Because God forbid you would be able to actually change things in the setup if you decided to set it up differently. Anyway, moving on, we have connect to Wi-Fi. This step is completely optional. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. And if you do, you can just sign into it. And just connect one very quickly. Next, we have check uh, the following. So you have the I agree to end user license agreement. And the second one is optional. So don't check this. Just just don't. Doesn't matter what it is. If it's optional, you should never agree to it. Moving on. Getting your phone ready. Like we didn't have enough time before. So here we have the sign-in page for Google. Now this is optional, you don't need to sign in, but if obviously you're planning to download some kind of applications from the Play Store, you most likely want to sign in. I'll just disregard this and move on to the next page. Uh, yes, skip signing in. Connect to mobile network. Now you can do so by inserting a SIM card or connecting an eSIM, as you can see right here. Now this page will, I believe, only show up if you have connected to Wi-Fi. As to set up your SIM card or eSIM specifically, you do need a network connection. Here we can select a PIN. Now by default it opts into a four-digit PIN, but we can change screen lock options and choose pattern or password out of the other options. Or you can just skip protecting it altogether. Now I am actually going to select a pattern just because without any kind of protection, we wouldn't get this page. So set up your fingerprint as the device does have a fingerprint sensor right here. You can also add your fingerprint. Uh, I'm going to select not now. I don't want to add it. I just wanted to showcase this. And you can also see that there is no face recognition, even though the device has a selfie camera. Anyway, uh, moving on, we have Google services like location, scan scanning, and sending user and diagnostic data. Now, you can turn all of these off, but let's be honest, it's Google. 
it's not like these options do F all for Google. Uh, they will gather your data one way or another, with or without your permission. I'm pretty sure about that one. And if they didn't, um, well, then there wouldn't be cases like, for instance, criminal being found because they decided to take their device, even though it was, for instance, in airplane mode, which would imply a uh, disconnect from everything. But yet, somehow, it, the device was still being tracked. So, are we really not sending user and diagnostic data or using location if I turn that off, if you still can locate me? Just because you don't do it through the mentioned ways, uh, right here, don't mean that there are other ways that you can't do this through that you didn't mention. So it means absolutely F all right here that, oh, they're not going to use Wi-Fi and GPS to, to, to locate me. They're just going to use Bluetooth or other bullshit that allows them to pinpoint my location. So it doesn't really matter what you do right here. At the end of the day, it's Android and it's gathering the most absurd amount of data that you can ever imagine that you just don't know. Anyway, moving on, we have choose your browser and search engine. OK, so we have several different browsers. Now, these aren't all the browsers that I can choose, to be completely frank with you. But uh, these are the ones that Google decided or maybe got beaten over the head to add uh, as options over the Chrome because, you know, Monopoly is bad when this was coming out, but apparently it's good now. So you can choose whichever one you want. I personally use Firefox myself as it's the one of the very l limited amount of browsers that aren't based on Chromium, which means aren't based on Google, which in turn means that Google can't gather data unless, well, it's still running on Android. So a uh, little bit less true, but still an improvement over Chrome. Additionally, uh, we can also add blah black ads a little bit easier using things like Firefox. As let's be honest, Google has been on a warpath against ads, so that's a little bit more annoying nowadays. Now next we have a search engine. Now I can tell you this is a very small list of search engines as there is a absolute buttload of search engines that you can choose from. Um, but the, yeah, this is a piss poor excuse for search engine list. So choose whatever you want from here. You can obviously change it later. You can make a manual link uh, to whatever search engine you want in the settings, so it doesn't really matter. Next, continue setup. Well, I mean, yes, I haven't finished it, so let's continue. Anyway, review additional applications. So this is just spamware that comes with your device. We can completely deselect all of it unless you want some of these applications installed then check individual ones. Maybe you want Google Home or I don't know, maybe Wallet so you can pay with your device. Uh, but probably most of these aren't really things that you're looking for. Next, we have navigation mode. We have gestures and we have buttons. We're gonna select, at least I am going to select gestures as that is the way that I prefer to navigate through my device. Anything else? Um, control info. Nope, that's about it. So no thanks. And click on finish and this as you can see takes us to the home screen with the device fully set up so if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching and disregard the firefox downloading on its own